for the select board um, to uh, provide some direction input regarding the recently up approved moratorium uh, for the, uh, Jeremy, if I have any terms that are incorrect, please correct me. Uh, the moratorium is with respect to the outer and coastal harbor regions of our waterways here. Um, that uh, moratorium at the moment is uh, 180 days, and um, we're getting close toward the um, closer toward the end of that six uh, six uh, month moratorium, and we just need to proceed and uh, process uh, what. Basically, our objective today is to is for us to define select board um, what information uh, we want, we need, we think we want investigated, by and by whom, and preferably by when, so that we can uh, bring this to the table for final uh, uh, judgment on the moratorium, or whether to even extend the moratorium. If we extend the moratorium, it has to be for an additional six months. We can't do less. Correct, and, and it cannot be for something different than what was already voted on. Correct. So you Correct. can't shrink it down to be Correct. just, say, folks on peers. Right. So with that, um, Jeremy um, uh, has provided us with um, with a um, packet information on, well, a map of the, well, let's make sure we understand what the outer harbor is and what the coastal harbor is in terms of a geography, in addition to various documents that um, apply to the regulation of piers, docks, and floats. And Jerry, maybe a good start would be to just in, in a two sentence on each one, describe um, what the, the zoning ordinance, not the detail of it, what it regulates, what the, what the other ordinance, uh, inf uh, the uh, harbor ordinance regulates, uh, just generally, so by, by topic, in other words, the physical restraints of, of docks and piers are in this document, the, and the regulations, the, that, that kind of thing, just to summarize for everybody, for all of uh, us. Sure, so in the harbor ordinance, um, as in the shoreline zoning section of our zoning ordinance, there are um, kind of um, criteria on oh so length of the pier, width of the pier, height of the pier, things like that. Um, and those are, I would call those kind of more development standards. And that's those are both contained in the harbor ordinance as well as in the shoreline zoning section of the zoning ordinance. And then on top of that, you have in the harbor ordinance, you have some review criteria, which are obviously they're objective um, and you need to, the harbor committee reviews those. And the planning board has uh, review criteria that they need to review under the uh, site plan um, ordinance of the town. And again, those are more objective criteria that need to be reviewed and the applicants have to provide documentation that the planning board um, and the harbor committee can utilize to make their decision. Um, does that help, Bob? Yeah, very, very much so. Cause, I mean, I could go into a little detail on what those, what they speak to, if you want, when I say objective criteria, it's like... Just in general, I don't want to read the... Navigation, for instance, of impact on, I think one says impact on fisheries. Um, there's a whole host of things, um, but those are again, in, contained in the harbor ordinance and in separate standards in the site plan section of our zoning ordinance. They also need to comply, um, the site plan section applies too, so there's submittal requirements um, that are needed to uh, be complied with on, on a submittal. Um, I will say that there has been some, um, I don't want to say confusion or, or about process. Um, the town has had a certain process done a certain way to review um, these piers and these types of structures. Traditionally, and again, I've been here with the town for almost working on five years, um, but as I understand for the last couple of decades at least, um, piers, when they would get reviewed at the town level, they would go to the Harbor Committee for review and then they would go to the planning board for review. The Harbor Committee doesn't make an approval, they make a recommendation or they don't make a recommendation. That goes to the select board. And then the planning board reviews it, uh, reviews their criteria and their, their ordinance requirements. And then that then goes, gets forwarded onto the select board as well for the select board to be the final kind of arbiter uh, on, on the pier. There is some disagreement or a little bit of confusion. I think that could be clarified um, in the ordinance um, so that there is more succinct explanation or on what the process is. <clears throat> I do think, and I've had the conversation with Bill Kelly, 
about this multiple times. I, I do think that what is a little odd in the harbor ordinance is that your review criteria as the select board is the same review criteria as the harbor committee. Um, and that's, that's a little odd because, um, you know, you don't want them to match up because what if the planning board, and similar to the planning board, the planning board reviews something and they find something meets all these standards, the harbor committee says it meets all these standards, then it goes to the select board and you have two committees, or a board and a committee that makes a recommendation, a board that makes an approval, sends it off to the select board and the select board says, well, we don't, we don't, don't agree. Um, I think you really need to clarify and make some kind of separation or some define a little better on what the select board reviews. Um, in, in my opinion, I think Bill Kelly would say the same thing because, you know, if two boards reviewed something and they find something they found based on all the evidence, all the materials that were submitted meets these certain review criteria, and then it goes to the select board with the same criteria, and the select board has the same evidence, but the select board finds in a different, you know, finds in a different way. Um, I think that needs to be clarified better in the ordinance and maybe separate what you actually review, because I think from the select board perspective, it should be more policy, if you will, um, and look at things like navigation um, and say density of peers in certain areas. Um, those are certainly, I think, more policy types of um, questions than specifically stated in zoning ordinance review criteria, if that makes sense. Does that help? No, no it doesn't because we continue to say that it's extremely confusing. I, I agree with the statement that the past practice has been what you're saying, that it's it's gone to the Harbor Committee and then it has gone to the planning board and then it's been going to the select board. The ordinance itself is very clear that it shouldn't do that. The ordinance says very clearly that the Harbor Committee reviews it within a certain number of days and then it goes to the select board for approval, disapproval or approval with conditions and then the planning board goes through the site plan review process. And to me, that system that's in the ordinance makes perfect sense because the select board is in the position of, I agree with the thing about their, the criteria being the same does add this, this kind of complexity to it, but it's the planning board's job to do site plan review and to make sure that any conditions are implemented. And so it, it is the select board at the policy level and, and then the planning board is reviewing an approved project essentially to make sure that it, that it complies. By doing it the way that it's been done, it creates the impression when it comes to the select board that it's already an approved project. It's, it, it, it doesn't, it's very, very clear in the ordinance, the order of things. So I don't know, just because we've been doing things wrong for the past couple decades, I don't understand why we're saying it's confusing. I, mean, I will say, I, I don't necessarily wholeheartedly agree with that, and I appreciate what you're saying. I will, you read the, the, the site plan review section for, on the planning board, and it says that the planning board can review and should take comments from the Harbor Committee review. It doesn't say, as and the select board's review, um, it specifically says, it just says the Harbor Committee's comments shall be forwarded to the planning board. It doesn't say anything about the select board either. The and the ordinance also says that the, the in essence, um, what can be appealed on this is the select board um, review is the final kind of arbiter that gets appealed. Um, so that would happen normally at the end. And well, that's in the site plan section of the ordinance, then that's different than well, the overall section well, of the ordinance. Yeah. I mean, well, we, we gotta, we, we, I, uh, this, is, this just speaks to be, oh, things need to be clearer. No. And I, I think yeah. that's, that's I was my gonna point. say, uh, so, so, just one second, okay. Sophie wanted to say something. Uh, I, I, think, I think that there are, there are a couple of levels of information that the board needs. One is recommendations on the process and what the process should be, and then we would adhere to it. I, I believe there is confusion because what you said, Allison, we've been doing it differently than what the documents suggest. So right there is a conflict. That 
needs to be corrected. It's one way or another. Corrected, and I think I know you want to say something, Sophie. I just want, if I can, really Sophie. quickly, I think it's important to, we didn't identify that in the moratorium language. Um, so I think that should happen concurrently with addressing the moratorium language. Right. Well, they're connected. They're, I agree with you. Sophie, your so, turn. Thank you. So I, I think we're already diving into a lot of details, yep. and I would like to take it back a few steps yep. just to understand also for Tom's benefit because it's his first workshop. Um, what is the agenda? What are the things that we want to review in the ordinance? Who is going to be responsible for making recommendations and yes. suggestions? Yes. What is the time frame for making those recommendations and suggestions? Mm -hmm. When do we need to submit a extension to, for the moratorium to make sure that we have enough time to complete the work? Mm -hmm. So before we dive into those super interesting mm -hmm. and contentious issues, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm more comfortable when I, I understand the process and what that, it is that we want to achieve. That this, so, whole, this whole workshop is about defining right. that process only. Right. And that's what we need to do. And so, I, so we it need would to, be helpful to get some input if we can, but the process for me is number one. I, I totally agree. So I think in my for, memo that I, I, I sent. That's exactly what I was trying to start this whole thing with is, first of all, it's a workshop. We don't make decisions in workshops. I think we all understand that. We're just trying to set a direction and who does what to whom and, yeah. and by when. And first one is the process that absolutely has to be clarified, defined, recommendations as to what it should be, and that's that's a major item. That's some that relates to ordinances or other regulations or whatever we have. We need to assign that somewhere to do some homework on that. Yeah, and recommendations on who, how, what should look at that portion. Yeah, in my memo, I suggested that I think you should task the Harbor Committee with it. I did include the copies of the changes, the proposed changes that the Harbor Committee proposed back in 2015. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that wasn't that long ago. And they looked at some of these issues that were identified in, in the moratorium language. So I would kick it back to them to look at what they did in 2015. It's a whole new Harbor Committee for the most part. Um, but what what they did back then was, I think, pretty good. Um, it's a pretty good document, maybe to start with, um, and and go from there. Um, the timing, again, you mentioned this: we're 120, more than 120 days beyond um, the start of this moratorium. So we've got 60 days to work on that. You have to make reasonable progress, and if you're not making reasonable progress, then you know I think the town has some issues. So getting the Harbor Committee to work on it. I know that they started looking at it, um, peers at their last meeting um, was a, a, a discussion item. Um, I would encourage you to send it to them. And certainly there's no way in my talking with the clerk today to get anything to voters for November. Um, no. I'm talking with, with Katrina today, I mean, I think everything has to be done by the end of July, she told me today. Actually, um, actually, it's mid-August. What's that? It's actually mid-August, but still, it's, a month, it's less than a month. Um, so as far as extending the moratorium, you can do that. The select board can do that by holding a, a, a public hearing, a public hearing, a one-week notice, and it's, yeah. it's held. You guys we'll, make that vote. We'll, we'll take care of that administrative one. I'm not and I think, that, I think you should do that. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's the easiest one on the it list, is. honestly. We well understand the recommend there. But back to, um, I guess, in my mind, I'm... You know, I you should probably keep your microphone closer oh, based you, on feedback we've received in the past. Thank you, Allison. Um, my, my, just to throw out a question, I, I know the Harbor Committee did this work in 2015, but they're part of the defined process as it is today. They're kind of close to the forest. And, and I'm wondering if we shouldn't have, a, the, the whole process includes Harbor Committee, Planning Board, and Select Board. And I'm just wondering, is there any, any entity we could utilize that might be more independent and look at the whole thing from a perspective of what makes sense compared to other towns, compared to you know, the things we normally do? But this, we're not the only town that has to approve piers and docks. No, I mean, I think, I mean, I guess I would go to the harbor, to the ordinance itself and uh -huh. see what the harbor committee section says and what their, what their job is. Right. Um, but I would. I mean, I think they're the ones that know the, the harbor more than anybody. Um, yeah, I'm not talking about knowing the harbor. I'm talking about the process here. I mean, if some, let me throw a wild example, which I don't approve, but let's say that the uh, process should be the um, planning board review it only and the select board just <coughs> votes on the, uh, on the recommendation of the planning board. That's it. 
nothing else. Why would we, why are we, I don't want us to get in the, the mud of what it's been and try to tweak it rather than look at it. We have a, we have a chance to look at this fresh right now. That's just, that's just my opinion. Allison. Yeah, I'm going to go after Allison had her hand up. Yeah. So um, I, I really appreciate that you included the 2015 stuff because that's sort of the essence of what caused me to, to want to bring this up as I saw all of that work that was done um, and the, you know at the time the planning board and the harbor committee reached unanimous recommendations between the two of them which is a monumental achievement in town government and, um, and I watched as a two to three select board vote kept some of those changes from going to voters. Um, and to me, I had sort of seen what I considered to be like the perfect process evolve where there was significant participation and two groups of highly qualified, um, you know, volunteer committees re reached a recommendation and the select board said, oh no, we're not gonna let the voters vote on whether we want to um, ba prohibit new peers in the outer harbor. And so, um, I think there's a lot, you know, a lot of those recommendations from 2015 did go um, to voters. And um, so I think definitely starting with having the Harbor Committee be a big part of this, of course, um, makes sense. And that if we could try to find a way to categorize some of these different areas, um, obviously, you know, the moratorium painted a very broad brush and it's a big, it's a big thing. We had that whole Sherman's Cove situation with just you know the floats and whether a float and a dock counts as a permitted structure and all of that. Just that issue alone is going to take a little bit um, to digest. So mm -hmm. if we were to separate out, um, you know, the floats in that section of Sherman's Cove as as one task, that maybe the coastal harbor as one task and the outer harbor as one task. Um, and to your point, Bob, um, I, I do think it would be nice to involve um, another group some. Um, the, the Conservation Commission is one that comes to mind. In the past, um, like Harbor Access Points has been something that's been shuttled around between different committees. Um, I, it's been great to see the Harbor Committee take interest in that recently. In the past, it had been the Conservation Commission that that did that, um, and I, I do see these issues as really like intimately um, intertwined, the public access part and the, and the peers. So if there's a way to yeah. um, incorporate the Conservation Commission or you know some outside entity like the Soil and Water Conservation District or something, because I, mean, I will um, I will say in the idol zone, and it has it has a value beyond. Um, recreational the ordinance that I mentioned that said the site plan review section that says the planning board can take comments um, from the Harbor Committee it also says and other committees or entities yep. such as the Conservation Commission so that might be a you have the Harbor Committee handle it but get the Conservation Committee to join in um, have those be open meetings and you know even planning board members could attend what generally the Harbor Committee could identify some areas um, for input from the Conservation Commission or some other. I think the separating them into two kind of, you know, the coastal and the outer harbor is probably a good way to start to have this group start working on things. Um, I think it's important to note too, and this is I don't want to get into the weeds on this, but um, riparian property owners, property owners that have a waterfront property. Um, there by state by state law they are allowed and we cannot prohibit them from having a mooring um, and that's I think that's important and I just say that because um, ramps a, a float on a mooring is considered a mooring um, that's so interesting because when I made that argument about Sherman's Cove I was very much rebutted by um, but, but, but I, I just think it's important because to have that discussion you know you're certainly going to have moorings and floats in in not the in outer Sherman's harbor. Cove we're not, not in, in the not section in the of Sherman's Cove there are no moorings allowed in Sherman's Cove in a certain section in a certain section property owners have the right and it even says in our ordinance and in state law that property owners have a right to have a mooring 
Mm. And I think that's something that the Harbor Committee should tackle as well. Well, when you say separate coastal and and uh, outer, how, how, what do you mean separate? The different committees is looking at different? Not different committees, but just focus. There's so much in, I mean, the outer harbor is very different than the coastal harbor. Yep. Um, yep. And very the impacts different. are very different. The impacts on recreational, you know, people that want to walk down and fish along the, you know, along, along the shore. It's very different. You can't really get there out in the coastal harbor that easy. Sherman's Cove, you can. Um, and Sherman's Cove, the, the low tide is what it is out there. I think everyone knows what low tide is out. In, well, it's rising know. all the so, time, but yeah. So, so is, is what we're talking about uh, tasking different committees with precise tasks and giving them guidelines on how to tackle those tasks, like making sure that the public access is maintained or, or certain guidelines to help them through the work they need to do? Because, again, it's it's... And it's a human uh, instinct. We want to solve the problem right away. It's not going to happen. But it's not going to happen here. Going. So I'm really interested in, in understanding which sections of the moratorium we're going to give. And, and well, first of all, I we, think we've got to realize that. What are we trying to? First of all, we're still talking about who is going to be the entities. We got to take one piece at a yeah. time. We got to get confused. Yeah. Like I am. That doesn't take much. But um, um, who? what entity or entities are going to look at what scopes of work. Now, as far as what criterion they may have to look at, that's part of what they should be deciding too, what's important. This is, this is for them to provide us information that we may want to contemplate, including public access, and other elements that are important to the town of Camden. And that's part of this whole, in the end, when, when there is, a second piece of that is when there is an application for a peer, uh, or a dock, um, not a mooring, I would agree that's probably correct, but can be clarified, that the, what is the process they recommend the town go through based on their analysis? Yeah, so I, again, I'd still focus on the Harbor Committee being the lead on it and that they reach out to the, you know, and this is the guiding document. The moratorium ordinance to me is the guiding document for them on what their task is, right? We've identified and town voters voted on this moratorium, and these were the issues that were identified. And the Harbor Committee can go through that, and when mm -hmm. there's an issue, reach out to the Conservation Commission, uh, newly reconstituted Conservation Commission, right? Re yes, reach we out do. to them. We do. Reach out to the chair and say, hey, this is what we're working on. We've got to resolve these problems or look at this, and we think that you can provide valuable insight on this section. Uh, yeah. Reach out to the planning board the same. Reach out, you know, for 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 help, for assistance, for guidance, and if if they need to reach out to the soil and water conservation district for whatever reason they can, you can also reach out to consultants too. I mean, they can use. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that have a lot of interests here, and I that bring a lot to the table. I would agree. Um, I would agree. I, that, that, that's the kind of structure we need to find right now. And I think you got to, I mean, I think you have to do that in a hurry. And I think the Harbor Committee is ready to do it. Um, okay. And, um, you know, because you have to be making reasonable progress on this moratorium. And yeah, we, we're we, well we, into we, it. We know the objective. Let's, yep. let's stay off there for a minute. Yep. Um, but I think we need, we need to define that now. And we can't, it, it's probably going to morph. During the process, we're going to define everything today. This could probably it may be given iterations where, let's say, the Harbor Committee is leading, and they can bring a status to the select board and explain where this is going mm -hmm. and who's and how they're organizing it. But um, yeah, go ahead, Allison. I mean, the moratorium language is obviously why we're here, but the result of this is going to be uh, most likely when the, in conjunction with the expiration of the moratorium, will be. Um, ordinance revision that will be put before voters. So mm -hmm. if we're doing, if there happen to be things that relate to this that are um, not, you know, not mentioned for some reason in that moratorium, mm -hmm. um, sometimes what I see committees do is they, there's some like important and sort of agreed upon issue that comes up and then they, that's connected and then they get told, oh no, sorry, that's off limits for some reason or another when really it feels like it shouldn't be. So if I there's, think, I, think I think they should be, the there's nothing to say that an ordinance revision that mentions, you know, that isn't something mentioned in the or moratorium couldn't also. Agreed. No, they're parallel. Agreed. They're, they're, they're parallel that's my point about the process too, to they're clarify parallel. that even better. Right. Um, right. Now, so assume we do that and, and the Harbor Committee can make recommendations about 
you know, what pieces in pie they want to talk to. They definitely should involve the Conservation Commission because, in my mind, Sophie, the uh, Conservation Commission is the one that's going to look at public access yeah. and those kinds of things that we may be more communal uh, versus the... Mm, I mean, the Harbor Committee, it's great. I think it's awesome that the Harbor Committee is looking at that public I, access I, part, too. I, this is all about just getting a, a fresh look and a, and a fresh defined process going forward. So we can do that, too. Um, just from my perspective, one of my confusions about the moratorium is I, I have no idea what is even potential, given current regulations for future piers and docks in the areas, especially the outer harbor. I keep hearing that there may be only a couple of possible alternatives out there, or is there a hundred? I, I don't know. Um. I think there may be the ability, and if you're referring to the Outer Harbor from Marine Ave all the way around, um, around the And I don't want to define it today. Pole. I just want to know what that is. Yeah, I, I believe that there's a possibility that we could get one more, um, and I, I think Will Gartley, who's here, I think has looked at this quite um, quite a bit on how many piers could yeah. happen in the area. So, well, I don't building of existing piers to make them longer. There's a lot of there's. This is what they say every time to well, make there. us not ban anything. Is well, well, not but, I, but my point is to, to the physical infrastructure mm -hmm. um, is part of this process of reviewing for the moratorium. Uh, I think I'm recommending the board that we have some information fed back to us about any any future what what can be accomplished in the out. Um, Coastal Harbor is kind of easier to find. I, to I, 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 I would tend to agree with you. Yeah, but the outer harbor is, is the core of our harbor. And um, y yes, new pairs, yes, I would like to know where the possibilities of those could occur. And or to Allison's point, anything else that may be affected by existing pairs, can they extend them? Can they, just so we know, what, what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with a, a bag full? Or are we dealing with a thimbleful? I, I don't know. I think you're dealing with a thimbleful, but I'm I, not I, asking your opinion. I, know. I want the data. The Harbor Committee did start looking at this already, and I, I and you know, I think just let them continue down that road. Um, Which the they did extensively in 2015. So the, I said this so, is why do we just throw out the work that has been done I'm, in the past when they did so much work and then it wasn't. We don't. Um, not so. suggesting throwing that out, and that's why I included it. And I think the Harbor Committee would utilize yeah. that yeah. as well as the moratorium ordinance okay. to say, okay, this was clearly what was just voted on by voters in June of this year. There's concern here. These are the concerns that the town, town folks have. And a prior har Harbor Committee not that long ago Propose some yeah. changes. Yeah. So and, let's and, meld and, those and when, things together. It, it, and nobody's it. throwing out the draft of 2015. Correct. I don't and, think that's Sophie, appropriate. What she wants to talk. All I'm saying is, at some point, this select board, or a future select board, is going to have to make a decision about the moratorium, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important for the public and myself included now to understand what the issues are at hand physically by looking at a drawing, by looking at a sketch that says. This is probably the places where they could be added. This is a place to that want kind to show of, all the floats too and all the ramps. I want, I want to show. The, I want to show everything so people understand. It. Well, for example, a did. congested harbor. I mean, I, you know, I boat, but I'm not an expert in Sherman's Cove, and I'm not an expert in the other harbor. But um, that I'm just you know, the physical information in, in, done in a sketch needs to be developed. It needs to be part of this homework, as it were. I don't care. Um, I don't think the Harbor Committee is going to do the drawing. I don't think they could, but somebody, somebody, somebody's going to sketch. Somebody should, and and we shouldn't preclude floats. We shouldn't uh, preclude. Anything the town might build. It, it, that's anything the town might build. The Sherman's Cove. That sounds like a fun game. Uh, I should say yeah. uh, steamboat. You know, that, those kind of. We need to know. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a separate task that should be that in separate. Here. This is focusing on residential right now, but again, like Allison said, as this thing goes, they can propose well, other changes in the ordinance as well. That's correct. Right. But, so, the, but people building these private floats interferes some, I guess in some I'm, cases I, with the town building something. I guess what I'm asking is, is do we need to invoke a consultant to do that part or not? Um, I'm not sure we really need to do that. I think we could probably work with okay. the Harbor Committee, myself, and, and okay. the existing resources right. that well, we That have. should be part of the task. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sophie, go no, ahead. No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so I, I am the 
Harbor Committee liaison. And we've started looking into, actually the Harbor Committee not, has started looking into the moratorium. And the feedback I, I have received from Josh and the Harbor Committee is really to define their task very clearly because they, it's a lot of work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things that we need to work with the harbor committees to make sure that we task them with things that are achievable and realistic and within their the, the scope and the competencies of the harbor committee and uh, also count on them to clearly tell us you know at what junction do they need help from whom and to do what and the way i've been listening to the conversation so far my understanding is that the harbor committee will be will take the lead in this process mm -hmm. and inform us you know, of the progress and how, what kind of support they need. But uh, Bob, and, and please uh, contradict me if I'm wrong, but Josh is here. Okay. Um, maybe we should have him express, you, you know, take, take, take the floor. I thought he the answers were ready. So, uh, if it's, I, I don't know the protocol, so if, if that's, Josh okay. Well to know if he has, he needs I know, he always knows. This is the time to ask it. If it's any fuzz and it's bound to be, I'm feel free, Josh, just to raise your hand and let us know, or anybody else for that matter, because we don't. Yeah, one of the biggest problems is leaving a lot of this rhetoric, and then everybody say, I, "I think they said." I think they said let's X. Yeah. Let's check the video, and that's not. A, I mean, we no. can revisit it too as a select yes. board at some yes. point. I don't think it needs to be now or never. Or it's like, right. sorry, no, no, I mean, no, no, it's going to be a conversation going. No, on, I would but hope, but I would absolutely. Like I'll, what you I'll, said, Sophie. I'm just but, saying. But, to but Bob, I agree. But so, I don't yeah, want to yeah. have right. the next harbor committee meeting starting like. So, Sophie, what you guys? What did you guys meet that mean at the workshop? Right. I think they should have been at the table with us. But Josh. Yes. <laughs> As we all argue over whether Josh wants to speak or not. But. Right. You know continue. Don't, actually. We should continue talking um, to, about you in the third person. That's it's really right. nice, right? Let's ask Josh. Um, so, no, to Sophie's point, I think that is exactly what the, what the Harbor Committee needs is clarity on um, scope of what you would like us to review and in what order. So I can tell you that um, the moratorium is, is very broad, has a, has a lot, of, lot to it, um, and we did review it at the last uh, meeting. Looking at that is going to be a, a large task. Bringing in public access and other things as part of that review, I think is going to be too much. Certainly in 60 days, I can tell you that. Um, so I think we need to be very clear about asking the Harbor Committee to review the the pieces of the or of the moratorium and developing data about the number of potential peers, et cetera, everything that's specified in that moratorium. But at the at the risk of being a little too black and white, keeping it pretty focused initially on the moratorium um, and and identifying the problem yep. that the moratorium was passed by the voters to address to say okay we talked about it in you know the language talks about the the threat and all of that what is the threat let's let's really get all of that data I think that's achievable in relatively short order going much beyond that uh, I get a little like Whoa, I just, we need to be careful of the uh, expectations I think your description of prior to prioritization is correct um, it, yeah I don't know what will be done in 60 days or not it's going to be a, that's, a, that's a short it is a summer it is a challenging time with people uh, but however that's one of the reasons why you have the ability to reach out to other committees like conservation commission to say other elements in here that that we should recommend to the board or whatever for consideration mm -hmm. so the moratorium identifies public access as part of the threat so it concerns me to hear you say that that might be too does it actually say public access as, I didn't whereas Whereas uh, structures such as piers, docks, floats, uh, float and floats may interfere with public access to and the use of the intertidal zone and harbor waters and ecosystem. But it goes on to so yes, it definitely. But I think what Josh means, uh, because he's, he's here, but he can't really speak right, is that oh. tasking the Harbor Committee with the public access piece of work might be too much for them to undertake. So we need to have another entity take care of it. Oh, to, to review the to impact. Review that. Yeah, yeah. That is not, say, is not okay. 
Yes. Yeah, do you want to... <laughs> No, I think that's exactly right. I mean, we can look at uh, the impact that these piers, um, floats and uh, ramps, et cetera, will have. Um, I didn't realize that it actually specified uh, that public access was a threat identified in that moratorium. So I think that does open it uh, to some degree. But I think looking at the bandwidth that the Harbor Committee has, I, I think if we're going to look at public access points around the You're entire public, Outer Harbor, that's... Uh, I just thought it was... No, I was referring to that as a as a separate thing that I know you've been talking about a little bit in the Harbor Committee. And it was just in Sherman's Cove, yeah. just in Sherman's Cove. Just in Sherman's Cove. Remember, the, sure. the, Harbor, yeah, yeah. the Harbor, Harbor Committee is acting as the uh, orchestra leader. And if the orchestra leader needs more trumpets and trombones, they can reach out for that. <laughs> yes. Okay. And they should. And yep. I think one asset said there's a conservation commission. I just mentioned others about, but I don't know what the bandwidth is about, you know, if you needed help with sketches, if you needed help with some of the pieces, yep. there are, or consultants, you need to raise the flag. Yeah, and I think I will. I see Will Gartley here today, and I know he knows a lot about this, so I would ask if we could include him as well as Absolutely. someone who has reviewed a lot well, of this. I, 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 I think I need to find the task first yeah. and how much detail we're getting yep. into. Go ahead. I mean, Will knows lots about this, obviously, um, but I do think there's somewhat of a conflict of interest when somebody's employed to design and um, explain it, it float. I mean, that's, a, that's a, a substantial part of the But they might have business. data. So the, I, I think it'd be I, up to the Harbor Committee to make sure that they, right, that we, right. we uh, protect that that's and correct. guard against that conflict of that's interest. Correct. But if someone has data that they, you know, that is at their fingertips, then I think it would be sort of negligent to sort of. But then we should I, also I consider bringing, I, I like the idea of, um, the reminder that it it is okay to use consultants sometimes and that that could be helpful to the yeah. harbor committee that um but maybe also some consultants like in terms of what's being done in other other places yeah, and you can, I, you can, you can yeah. consult anybody you want to consult but i think uh um, but if you need, but if you need to reach out to a consultant and it's going to cost some money, you should raise the flag we so we can get it approved yep. that's that is an issue yep. um, but also i i agree with that but just a reminder that hiring consultants takes time. Right. What? It takes time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so uh, again, we we need. I think I think the first task of the Harbor Committee is to create like a work plan, and and I'm happy to you know as your liaison, <laughs> happy to work with you on that at yep. the next meeting, and then start reaching out immediately to other constituencies that that should. Give us some, give the Harbor Committee some input, okay. and then we'll have a better idea. Maybe if we need to. Uh, that's a good idea. And that's a good. That's a good data point. And, and maybe at that point, because we do have a relatively short fuse on the current moratorium, yeah. um, we, we may give us an idea of. And you shouldn't use the 60 days as a gun because we may have to extend the moratorium. But we need that data. We're have to. I think we already uh, said we have to. We're going to have to extend it. It's no, it's probably no doubt. But yeah, I think. I mean, I think we we need to make. As Jeremy said, some uh, legitimate, reasonable progress towards oh, it. Sure. So, in the next 60 days, that's what we need to to demonstrate. Otherwise, I frankly, I think you're going to have a hard time extending it because we haven't done that part of it. So, uh, obviously, that's a that's a lot of work to do in 60 days. But I think we can using. Uh, and gathering all the data points that we can. I, I really think that's probably what the first 60 days is going to be, is largely um, data gathering, talking to uh, consultants, talking to the other, you know, getting the other committees involved, using the 2015 uh, recommendations or looking at those. I, I, I'm a little cautious of uh, putting those in front of the Harbor Committee and saying, did you like these? You know, because that was that was seven years ago. That's a completely different committee. Um, and I don't want to prejudge anyone. I want us to be able to go into that review and say, okay, let's, this is one data set. This was a smart group of people that, that looked at this, but there was, yep. you know, there, it wasn't a unanimous, obviously, forward since right. it didn't go forward. So yeah. Almost all of that actually did go forward. There was just a little tiny bit that the select board Picked out and oh, it's said, two out of three. I mean, two two approved it one day. Right. So, so pretty... and you know, identifying which areas maybe it's right. some things are very complicated for the public to be able to to vote on, and they might it you know it depends how you word it and all of these things. And some things are relatively simple and very easy for the public to understand, and we can I think look for opportunities to Sorry. use them for guidance. Um, you know on 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 certain issues to separating things out. But. 
Are there any buckets we've missed besides we discussed the process? The process I'm, discussed, I'm starting to be happy with. <laughs> yeah, starting to be happy. No, I'm, talking about the, I'm talking about the process of who approves what and when and what documents and clarifications there. That's, that's one. That's the it's not in the moratorium, but that needs to be cleaned mm -hmm. up. Yeah, and, I mean, and, I think that's something that, that the Harbor Committee yep. can certainly so look that's, at. And that's, the, at the planning I, board, we can look at that too. Yes, that's a um, bucket that we need to take a look at. That's one. Two was some of the information regarding the harbor. It's den I call it density, a mm -hmm. uh, potential density, and, and how it relates to all the elements that density can involve, including public access. Is there any other piece of, of the equation that we're missing? I, I don't think so. I think what's going to come up is the public is going to want to know, like, what's the appropriate way for the public to provide input? And in the past, um, there's been um, like confusion about whether that's the job of like the Harbor Committee to try to solicit public input or whether um, and I've always kind of felt like um, like the, the reason that we have committees is generally not for them to try to I mean of course they're all getting public input all the time just be, just because we all live in the town but that it's sort of their recommendation that we're looking for in some ways and that it it shouldn't just devolve into a mass public input um, outreach event where you're using your role as trying to figure out what does the public really want. Although mm -hmm. I also don't, I don't know how, I know that the public is going to want to provide input. So maybe that should come to us and then we send it to them or should it go to them? I don't know. We will work out some way of having public input. But first of all, committee, committee, we're not, the committee meetings cannot be closed to the public. They right. must be open to the public. Yeah, However, are. on the other hand, with a lot of work to do, I know that uh, in past experience, the committee can get overwhelmed by if I would start off initially with public input at the committee meetings. If you feel that uh, you're seeing a trend and, and you recommend that we we take to Allison's point, maybe have a public hearing on the matter. We, we can no, certainly. No, no, no. That's not really what I'm saying. Like, a lot of people just want to be able to provide written input during, you well, know, should, should I, should we you, say. Who are you suggesting they send it to? I guess I'm, at, I'm asking for. I have the answer. I, I, to, to Jeremy, to the, I mean, I think it's always okay to send public input to the select board. I, um, yeah. Yeah, but that puts us in, a, in a, that puts five of us in a role of having to. I would send it to me, and then I would forward it off to the Harbor Committee. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Let's we'll start that way. Go ahead. Yeah, and I was thinking that in, I was thinking that in the work plan that we can also put like a couple of options where it would be a good time to have a public hearing because we have to have public input, correct, to show to demonstrate that we've made progress. Um, no, no, we don't. No, we don't. No, no, you need to just no. make progress, and however you decide, make progress, you need to make you make progress. You, make, you, make a, you have to have a public hearing have to a public extend hearing the moratorium. To extend the moratorium. Yeah, there's no. Okay. The, 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 okay. This, don't let's not public over hearing. let's not over over reach on this thing about we, we we just haven't had this meeting we should have had two months ago. I, I, I well, a month ago. Okay. We, we approved it in June, but we could have had this earlier, but we didn't. And what, you know, but it, is, it is what it is, and we're going to go forward with doing our activity. Nobody's going to challenge it. We're talking about public input. I think it's a good point. They haven't submitted it to Jeremy, and, and he can forward it to, well, certainly, he, and, and it's and probably Jeremy and Sophie. Because um, I'm the so, Harbor Committee liaison. That, that way, well, yeah, liaison. Yeah. Oh, that way, our liaison is being informed, and you guys are working. Well, I'll just forward things that people send to me. I'll forward them to you. But I'm not yeah, going to. I'm not comfortable too. telling people that they can't send stuff to the select. No, of course not. We're, We're not, not telling anybody that. they can't. We're suggesting <laughs> that the procedure be to Jeremy and, and Sophie, Sophie, and yeah. Yeah. if they want to send it to me too, I will forward it to them also. That's not a big deal. Anything else, Josh? That we can help you with? And no, I think it's fairly clear what we're. What we're taking what you, on. We, what we just did is we handed you an anchor on the boat and said, with no chains, jump over. <laughs> Pretty much. But there is one last point. I mean, the Harbor Committee is working on some other yes. things. So I think we should also address this and saying that for the time being, the priority is going to be working on the moratorium, knowing that the other things that the, the other items that the Harbor Committee is working on might be delayed. Yeah, there might be a few that are delayed. Managing expectations. The good news is we were we knew this was coming it was when the voters yes. passed it, so we knew this is probably going to land with us quickly. So we were trying to finish up the Sherman's Cove uh, analysis is the oh. is the pressing one. Okay. So um, and that one is it's pretty short. So yep. that one shouldn't be should be fairly simple.
example. So we should be able to polish that off, I think, uh, at the next Harbor Committee meeting quickly. That and then use that to support some of your work here. Um, we might, although that's, you know, Sherman's Cove, as you will learn, not to cut not to cut ahead, but um, is a small part of the Outer Harbor. It's not the entire Outer Harbor um, and is very, very spe special piece, a very specific piece. So um, it is a piece, though. It's okay. Okay. That's great, Josh. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Any other questions, Tom? Do you have any other questions, items, input? Nope. Thank you. Um, Jeremy? Um, you can really disappointed this isn't going straight to the planning board or? <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll come up real quick. Sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> I was also going to say that the standards that are in the for the kind of like the the physical, um, you know, review criteria on like length of the pier, width and height, and those kinds of things, those are in the harbor ordinance, and they're cut and pasted in, into the shoreline zoning section of the ordinance. So, right. I don't think the planning board necessarily should be working on zoning amendments to tweak that section because let the harbor committee do that, and then we'll just make sure those get codified into the shoreline zoning section. But you may want the planning board to look at the review criteria that they have currently for site plan review yep. for peers. Yep. Yes. That's, yes. A yes. that's a good point, Jeremy. Just throwing that out. It's all my thunder, but ah. you know. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sitting in the back of the room and sort of wondering what I'm doing here, right? Because it's it, this really is, I believe, a harbor committee issue as far as the the, the review of, of the harbor ordinance and, and the moratorium. Um, the planning. Planning board is good at taking the ordinance and applying it to a project. That's, I mean, we also do planning, but that's really our core responsibility. Sure. And so when we get to this um, this issue, the one question that I do have, and it's and it's it's just it really is a question, but I know that the there's confusion in the in the ordinance as to the process, and we're we're saying we haven't been following it. What is the rationale for a select board essentially a veto power over? you know, prior decisions by both a committee and a, and a board. So that's a question you can look at and say, do we really need as a select board to be reviewing what the planning board has decided fits the ordinance and then having veto power over that? It, and, and obviously when we do send an ordinance amendment to you, we want you to look at it and then decide whether you're going to send it to the voters. This is a different type of situation, right? This is where we're just applying the law, the ordinance to a specific project like you're doing land permits in, in almost everything so we don't we don't send a subdivision review to the select board to say hey that's okay we're going to approve that I so agree. it's like a veto power that you don't really need um, your role in my opinion is to oversee and direct all of the stuff in the creation of the ordinance and, and how the moratorium works and how the ordinance is applied but you're not you don't necessarily need to be involved in the actual approval of individual peer projects that's my personal opinion mm -hmm. um, but from the select from the planning board position we're happy to look at as Jeremy said, this, the criteria that we actually have now and how those work, but I'd probably suggest that we wait until we see what they come up with with the yeah. harbor ordinance. Yeah. Because that those are the people we have on the ground with the expertise in this area. Yeah. And and you know from the planning board perspective, we don't have you know a particular dog in this fight other than you know when the project comes up, we have to apply the law to it. Right. And so um, we've no, approved. I agree. Might, I, you know. I think to your point, that's why I was just trying to address it probably inadequately earlier was we have an opportunity to look at the picture. And, you know, I uh, it, it, sometimes processes and morph over 100 years and they get kind of stuck of under your nails and that's just the way it is. Yeah. But when you're when you're evaluating it, you, you should evaluate absolutely everything, including what you just said, you know, what what is the roles and responsibilities of the various entities. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious to what other towns do and not just here and um, I know what they do in California, it's different, but I don't know what the rest of New England does, so I'm yeah. unarmed. Allison. Um, I mean, Obviously, there are different categories of things people can build a build a house without ever having to go to the to the planning board in, in most cases, and that's kind of I see it as the way the the ordinance was set up. There are different levels of um, you know things being like a big deal, I guess, in the eyes of the public for building a, a home. You get the code enforcement officer to to sign off on that. Then we have these other cases where. Um, Camden residents voting in the past have said, okay, if it's a building that meets the uh, commercial building, we want that to go to the code enforcement officer and the planning board to go through this whole thing. And then there are these other really special categories, um, and I sort of take that as direction from, you know, past voters and past planning exercises where they want additional 
um, review, and they want the people that they've elected to be able to sort of be held accountable for evaluating things that are um, subjective, the, the criteria for the, um, for the peers, it all comes down to substantial impact or not substantial impact. And I think that the way that we define that over the years is, is different. Something might not have a substantial impact on activity in the harbor in the eyes of you know, one group 50 years ago, but today using the harbor differently it, something might constitute a substantial impact. So I guess that's sort of the way I see it. But I, I think, again, you've got the, the uh, Harbor Committee appointed by the Select Board. You've got the Planning Board appointed by the Select Board. And then you've got a veto power. Now, I'm not sure of other situations where that exists. Um, there may be, but I'm not clear on those. Um, so it's just a question of, of just general process. It's not a question of whether you guys are the right ones to make the decisions. <laughs> but that's is. just, it's just, a, a, it, it is odd that there's sort of a, I mean, and, and Bob pointed this out at the beginning, you've got two committees saying yes, yes to something, and then the select board saying no. Like, you'd have to have some sort of feeling that something wasn't I mean, done. it's advisory. The committees are all advisory. That's, I mean, well, I'm... the planning I'm, board is not advisory, though. I mean, we issue... That's the, true. That, and, and, and that's, some, and that's, odd, the, yeah. that's what's written in the ordinance, is that's how I, it, how I it think goes. That's why I go to the planning board after for site plan review. as part of my feeling that when it goes to you guys, it is the final say. Right, and that's sort of, um, that, that, that does fall into what I'm saying. So that, that's not inconsistent. It's just a question of whether you feel like the planning board, I'm sorry, the select board needs to be involved in there. But the way it is now with them as a veto, with you as a veto power yeah. strikes me as odd. That does strike me as odd too. I, there are a lot of things that are- The but, decision yeah. on that matter will rest in the hands of the five select board members as far as the process goes. And, or, but, but it's, or, 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 or a vote, or a vote, yeah, a vote. Um, whatever the legislative entity we use um, I, I hate passing the buck to the voters because I think that's what we were elected for, right. um, to, to, make, to make recommendations right. to the, our well, legislative body. I think you would make a recommendation one way or the other and have the voters pass. Yeah, right, right. On, so. No, but an excellent point. I, that, that was my point. I just want to be completely transparent and I want the process looked at independently with the eyes that, you know, uh, and maybe utilizing how others do it or not. I mean, that's a, only a litmus test, but no, nothing, nothing should be off the table. Yeah. I, I, I agree with this, and I think there's a, a balance between the vit, veto power of the select board in this instance, which I agree with you is odd, um, and managing public interest, because we are, it is relating mm -hmm. to a public mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. um, so I know it's, it's, it's a hard thing, and on the other hand, I also don't want to be a select board that's rubber stamping. Right. because there's no value, mm -hmm. we're not adding value. So for me, the way I, I always look at processes is that in matters of public safety and public good, which is the case for the managing the harbor, mm -hmm. and that make sure that every step we create adds value, that it's, we don't need a bureaucracy. We need, we need to make sure that public safety and security is ensured, that we protect the land that we need to protect, and that we add value. Yes. Would, these would be the guidelines I would, yeah. abide by it. Yeah. And, and I, and I agree with that, and I think say, that it goes back know. to sort of Allison's point where maybe we do have it turned upside down. And, and then, you know, that the, the Harbor Committee as the sort of appointed committee, right. uh, but not an acting board, you know, provides recommendations to the select board, select board review says, yep, this looks good, pass it to the planning board. board. That's fine with me if that's if that's the, sort of the way you that's think that it should go. Exactly. And again, this isn't really a, an issue of, of the planning board feeling like we don't have a say or anything like that. It's right. not, we're not feeling right. overstep. I just, when I hear from sitting in the back of the room what's the discussion, I'm, it's just curious to yeah. me yeah. how Absolutely. it's turned on its head. Well, remember, that's the way it's kind of defined, but on yeah. the other hand, it's morphed to a different place yeah. for whatever reason. It happens, as I said, that happens all the time, yeah. especially in smaller towns yeah. and communities. So. We are so used to the planning board being the final say yep. Yep. that it, that's what it has felt very empty for it to come to the select board afterwards because it's like we're overturning a decision of the planning board. It doesn't, it doesn't feel there's something, right. totally there's something wrong with that, that it needs to go. Recommendation. That's just a recommendation and we want your, that, that's something that does require your oversight and approval to send to the voters. Right. We understand that, but when there's actually a formal decision that's applying set standards, yeah. it's curious. Yeah. yeah, it's been very but, awkward. I, I totally agree with you. I, same thing. I, why are we vetoing something that was already the same criteria as approved by 
our, our appointed planning uh, It'd board. It'd be a big waste of their time. To why are we wasting their time by having them do something first and then well, it, decide it, to just... Well, it puts them in a lose situation because we, we approved it all and you guys, because you thought there was a tree in the wrong place or something, that you disapproved it? I mean, right. That it doesn't make sense. It was a substantial sense. impact because of blah, blah, blah. Right. Good this, discussion, yeah. though, Ethan. Good okay. points. Good points. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Anything else? No, Anybody, thank you. Jeremy? This no, I think good. it all makes sense. I didn't know if you wanted to hear from anybody that's here or no. I I don't think we have anything to unless they want to comment on the on the process of the Harbor Committee. No, this is I don't want to turn into a public hearing yet. But any any input anybody has who's listening also, as we talked earlier, please submit uh, well emails to uh, preferably Jeremy and Sophie or any of us, and and we can just pass them on. So it's on Facebook, we'll find it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll find a way. But okay, with, uh, if there's nothing else, then um, I'd like to just we'll adjourn their workshop. We don't need a motion. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and listening to. I'm not sure what, but good to see you, Paul.